Hi everybody, welcome to Zoom Talk episode seven um, from Zoom 9 Studio. Uh, my name is Ben, and uh, today I'm here with Howard E. Warren. Um, hey Howard. Hey Ben. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, I'm a family law lawyer, been practicing family law for over 40 years. And in the last 10 years, I've become a mediator arbitrator, so I do that as well. And I assist uh, parties who are getting together or separating. And uh, uh, so can you tell us a little bit more about, um, so where's uh, your office located? And I'm in North York, beautiful downtown North York. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can, most of the time I'm in court, uh, if I'm going to court either in Toronto or New Market. So I'm about, uh, it takes me about equal amount of time to get to either place. And uh, I know that we're all under um, the quarantine, under COVID-19. So what's the new normal to you these days? Well, I'm not meeting clients in my office these days, which is very different. Uh, generally, uh, to communicate with my clients, I either do so over the phone or by email, or, I met, or before I was meeting them in my office. So I still use phone and email, but now I have meetings via Zoom generally, which is just fine. And is this something, a new skill that you picked up? Oh. Absolutely. <laughs> I was not a Zoomer before. I am now. And, and, and in, especially in my mediation practice, I've had to uh, use Zoom to set up and run meetings. And when you mediate, you often want to separate the parties for a period of time so you can facilitate the negotiations and get advice from them as to how they want to proceed, where they want to go, where they don't want to go. So I can put them into breakout rooms, which is which is just great. So you can talk to individual uh, parties. I can talk to the party and their lawyer in one room, and the other parties in, in the other room with their lawyer, and they cannot be part of that conversation. So it's great. Okay. And do you think, um, like, when the lockdown is over, do you think any of this new normal will be carried over? Absolutely. Uh, the the thing with Zoom is it's it's very convenient. It's, uh, you don't have to travel at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think parties will want to use it. it. It's nice to have the, the personal touch, but I think people will want to use this going forward. Not everyone, but it'll uh, be of great use for some. And do you record the, um, the whole uh, the course of the mediation? Oh. I never record mediations. I will record arbitrations, although I haven't done an, uh, an in-office arbitration, I'm sorry, an, a Zoom arbitration yet, but because they have the facility to record them, just as the court would record uh, a trial, I would record an arbitration. Okay, so it's for, for the record. Right. Okay, and uh, uh, so can you tell us a little bit more about, um, like I know you go to court for your clients, what does make a court lawyer different than um, a normal lawyer? Well, I don't only go to court. First, in the process, we would start with negotiation. So we'd try to reach a deal. Uh, that's first and foremost, because that's uh, to the advantage of the client, both uh, for stress levels and financially. If we can't negotiate, then there are a number of options available. We can either go to court or we can mediate arbitrate. Uh, there are other options, but those are the two that I use. And uh, uh, if I'm acting for a client, I can't be the mediate or arbitrator. But if I'm a neutral third party, I can. So if I go to court, we're arguing about issues on a temporary basis, and then we go through the process until we reach a, a final resolution or we have a trial. And uh, uh, so then, like, uh, when you go to court, and I know that uh, court can be stressful for a lot, of, uh, a lot of lawyers. A lot of people can uh, handle the situation. Can you tell us Very about? few lawyers go to court. It's, it's, it's a whole different game. Uh, you have to be. You have to have different skills to be a trial lawyer. Now, there are lawyers who don't go to trial who are very skilled in different ways. But when you're in court, uh, you know things change once you meet the enemy. The great, greatest battle plans are great until the, you meet the enemy, and then everything <laughs> changes. So just like in court, you get curves thrown at you all the time, and you have to adapt to that on the spot. You may hear something that you didn't expect, and you have to deal with it. And well preserving your client's rights and, and, and putting forward your best case. And I know that um, like 
between negotiation, litigation, mitigation, uh, and arbitration? Like, what are the difference and what means the registration? Okay, so you lump, you lump mediation arbitration into what we call alternate dispute resolution, because dispute resolution has been traditionally the court system. But with ADR, uh, you can have the option of mediation, arbitration, or mediation arbitration. And I'll explain that. Mediation is facilitated negotiation where uh, I will help parties come to a resolution of the issues if I can. Uh, arbitration is where you go to someone like me and uh, you present arguments just as though you were in court. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the end of it, I make a decision as though I was a judge. Uh, there's certain things I can't do. I can't put people in jail uh, <laughs> as they deserve it. but uh, uh, I can't do that, and that's just, that's fine. Um, but I can make decisions as though I was a judge. Uh, with mediation arbitration, you appoint one person to be the mediator arbitrator. So they try to help the parties settle the case. If they can't, then they become the arbitrator, and it becomes an arbitration as, as before. But in advance, you've already chosen the person who will do both. And what about, like, when you do ne negotiation? Do you negotiate outside the court, or...? Well, negotiation should be happening at all times through every process. So before you start a litigation or a mediation arbitration, there should be some negotiation. If that fails, then you go on to the next step. But at every stage of, of litigation, there's an opportunity to negotiate a settlement. In fact, the system's designed to do that. And in mediation arbitration, uh, throughout the process, there's the opportunity to negotiate. So the core system prefer you to uh negotiate your own way out always okay so yeah, the system is designed so that you don't go to trial okay <laughs> because there when you think of it there are there are you know 36 million people in this country and probably 36 million different ideas and there aren't 36 million judges so we have a limited number of judges who are there to resolve disputes if they have to so otherwise the court if you didn't have settlements the courts would be overburdened and would never be able to catch up. In fact, they're going to have a huge catch up now once COVID-19 is over. The catch up is going to be incredible and it'll take a long time before we can clear the backlog that's being created just by having been shut down for two months so far. So I know that um, the courts are closed at the moment, right? Well, they're not really closed. So they're handling a number of things. They're handling consent matters. So if you can agree on something and you want a court order on consent, that's no problem. If you've got an emergency uh, and you can demonstrate to a judge that they have a triage judge, just like you would at a hospital, there's tri a triage nurse, there's a triage judge who will decide if your case is urgent enough to pass along to a judge who will hear the case, uh, it's usually a motion at this stage, and decide whether or not, again, if it's serious enough to warrant uh, the judge dealing with it. Because again, there's so many cases and so few judges and we don't have the, the, the courts open the courts aren't open, but the judges are there. Like, can you file um, a, a case? Or and you can. You can. They're accepting some cases uh, electronically now, but unfortunately, uh, Ontario did not plan ahead well enough, and they're not set up for complete electronic filing as they should be, and as they're going to be in the very near future, because it's demonstrated just how important that is. And. And uh, uh, I know that you guys are part of the, uh, the essential list. Um, so like, uh, in what aspect are you? Well, I, I, frankly, until I was designated essential, I never thought of myself as essential. But no. according to Premier Ford, I am. So I guess I am. Uh, people have disputes. They need them resolved. They need someone to assist them through the process, someone who knows the law, and someone who has the skills to hopefully negotiate a resolution. And I continue to, to do agreements now. Uh, we have to have them signed virtually, so that's, it's not a problem really. Uh, as long as you can Zoom with, with uh, your client and see them sign, you can even swear their signature on an affidavit. Uh, so that's not a problem. But uh, not everything we do is go to court. We try to help our clients even in these times without resorting to the courts. Yeah. And uh, so, um, how can you help uh, your client these days, um, like through tele more telecommunication? Or? Well, a client came to me recently and he has a separation agreement that was drafted and, and uh, he needs to make a change to it. So we negotiated that change 
uh, I've drafted the agreement. I've sent it off to him for to review. He's happy with it. Now we just have to get it signed. So that issue is completely resolved. We never resorted to the court system or mediation or arbitration. Just by means of negotiation, it was completely settled. And so uh, a separation agreement, um, is that part of uh, like a pre-mobile? Um, okay. When you're going into a relationship, you can have a, a prenuptial agreement if you're planning on getting married. If not, you just have a cohabitation agreement if you're not planning on getting married. That sets out your rights uh, that, that, uh, that will hopefully assist you in resolving any disputes. There are certain things you can't deal with in a prenup. You can't deal with what happens if we separate. You're gonna, I'm going to have custody or not. That you can't do. But you can resolve many of the financial arrangements through a prenup. A separation agreement occurs after the relationship is broken down. And then if you can reach an agreement on those terms, you don't need to go to court, except maybe to get a divorce if, you, if in fact, you've married. And uh, so is it, um, is, it, is it good to have a prenup? Oh. Prenups are very important, but you generally tend to see them in second marriages. People get married the first time and it's all about love. And the second time it's all about the money. Oh, I'm gonna take you. <laughs> That's cynical, I know, but it's true. <laughs> so, like, um, is it more um, during the whole career? Is it more money problem, or is it like what is the um, the major catalyst for a divorce? The major catalyst divorce, from my perspective, is money. Is that uh, secondly infidelity, but money generally is the reason that the parties separate. This agreement's over money, the, the accumulation of it and the spending of it. The accumulation and spending. Uh, it's, uh, it's, and it's, it's better to have more than less, I guess. Generally speaking. <laughs> and um, You try not to spend more than you earn. Of course, that's the, that's the rule of uh, any, any financial advisor will give you that line. But if, the, if one party is a spender and the other is a saver, and that causes friction. Yes, uh, it's uh, that's where you come in. Yes, and so um, I want to ask. Well, well, let me let me let me qualify that. That's where a marriage counselor may come in first of all. So uh, that 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 that's that may be the first step. But if the marriage is broken down irretrievably, then you need someone like me to to help you uh, through the procedure. Yeah, and you don't want to. Um, I know that a lot of, um, when it comes to divorces, there's a lot of misconception about, you know, uh, people go bankrupt, just, you know, and it drags on for years and years. And well, there are those exceptional cases that drag on for years and years, but that really shouldn't happen. If, 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 if both parties are, are motivated to resolve the issues one way or the other, and their lawyers are as well, and you're not trying to bankrupt the other party, if that's not your intention, then it really shouldn't happen. Is it, um, is it a flaw in the core system that in the family law to design there? No, it's a flaw of personality. Flaw of <laughs> <laughs> And uh, uh, so uh, before we go, uh, other, um, so I know that a lot of people uh, is well, thinking about uh, when the lockdown is over, there's going to be an increase in, uh, in divorces. Uh, do you think that's going to happen? Familiarity breeds contempt. So yes, I agree. That will probably happen. There'll be a number of there'll be a number of uh, there may be a lot more births too. I, I suspect there'll be a, a, a new uh, a new baby boom. But unfortunately, there'll be some divorces. And uh, so, how are you guys preparing for um, for the boom if there is one? We'll handle it. We have lots of capacity to handle more work. Uh, and we're, we're sort of resting up now because we're not as busy as we were. Uh, people are staying home and minding their own business by and large. But uh, I think the boom's coming. So like you say that when the government will implement the electronic system, will that smoother make the whole process faster? Absolutely, because we, law offices generate just forests full of, of paper and it's unnecessary and it's, it's very slow and tedious. Uh, you should be able to serve your papers electronically and file them electronically. That would be much more expeditious. And then, and then get them before the judge quickly, and the whole process would be speeded up. So, um, so before we go, um, like I ask this question for every uh, every guest comes on, uh, like 
what is your Netflix recommendation? Netflix recommendation? Well, I must admit I've been watching a fair bit of it. And <laughs> there's, a, there's a certain type of, of, of movie that I, I hadn't watched in the past. And, uh, and because I've watched just about everything on Netflix, now I've broadened my perspective and I've been watching superhero movies. So anything by Marvel, Iron Fist, that's, that's my recommendation. Uh, yeah, and I know you, that you also produced movies in the past as well. Long time ago, I produced a feature film called Replicator, yes? Yeah, and like, uh, so is, is that your- You have a good memory, Ben. <laughs> and yeah, you guys, um, like, is it pique your interest to do a movie or? I think my movie making days are done. It was a lot of fun, but uh, that's past now. <laughs> Well, uh, really glad that you have uh, stopped by, have a chat, and get us understand uh, what's going on in the current climate uh, with your business and uh, the whole family law at the moment. And uh, uh, hopefully uh, everything will pick up soon. And uh, really great talking to you. Good to talk to you too, Ben. All right. Thank you. Stay safe.